that. Uh, but first, uh, I'm joined by a social commentator from uh, Young Voices UK, Jason Reed. Welcome to the studio, Jason. Thanks. It's great to be back. Uh, now, uh, I, uh, Dominic Raab today, new Justice Secretary and all that, uh, gave a sort of thumb-thumping speech at the Tory party conference, laying down some law and order ideas. Uh, the first one, uh, quite eye-catching, I suppose, is that, I suppose, minor criminals. He's talking about, well, I don't know, are these minor criminals? He's talking about robbers, burglars and thieves. Uh, they'll be fitted with uh, satellite tags to track their movement, 10,000 of them, when they are freed from jail over the next three years. Uh, there, there will be 183 million pounds spent extra on additional tagging and also uh, at the lower end of the criminal scale criminals uh, will be punished by being made uh, to work on american style chain gangs clearing up uh, towpaths pavements uh, canals wearing high-vis uh, jackets looking very very obvious as to what they are uh, what do you think about this kind of stuff it was very tory um i mean I, I sort of quite like the idea of the chain gangs actually dominic Raab, obviously the new as you say the new justice secretary he got a the rough end of the deal in the reshuffle when he was demoted from his previous role as foreign secretary it seems that he got a memo through from number 10 that they're worried about people's perception of the Tory party with law and order yeah. and so he had to make a big splash um, with the recent the Sarah Everard case and migrant boats crossing the channel and into Lake Britain uh, that reputation that the Conservatives have of being firm on issues of law and order and criminal justice is slipping away uh, but my concern is that this is more of a premature campaign idea talking about chain gangs than actually uh, a substantive policy idea that seeks to reduce crime and make our lives better. I mean, just calling them chain gangs, for example, my understanding is they're not actually going to be chained up, or are they? Uh, no, they're not, but uh, <laughs> that might be an idea. <laughs> I mean, the point is what we're talking about, and that's the whole point of the American chain gang, is it's a kind of a public shaming. Yeah. Uh, so uh, they these uh, British chain gangs, as you say, I'm sure they won't be shackled together, uh, but they will be very, very obvious, you know, wearing high vis jackets uh, under the supervision of uh, prison officers uh, and policemen, no doubt, uh, busy cleaning up the roads, cleaning out canals, cleaning up tow, tow paths so everybody knows who they are. I mean, you know, there's worse ideas, aren't there? What we should be doing is rehabilitating people, right? The, the re-offending rates in this country are enormous. I think it's 60% of people who are released from prison re-offend within two years of coming out. So we should be trying to get that number down. Maybe Dominic Raab is a genius and this idea is going to make no one re-offend ever again, but it seems unlikely. I think... I know how much you hate virtue signalling, Kevin. I, I think do so. hate virtue signalling. This yeah. is a bit of virtue signalling. Tory from virtue signalling. Yes, it? exactly. Yeah. It's, an, it's an eye-catching thing to say in a speech, and it will be an eye-catching innovation. Uh, but I look forward to seeing my first British chain gang because uh, we, we hear a lot of announcements from the Tory conference uh, and so few of them ever seem to come to pass. Uh, but one other aspect that he went into, which I think is a more serious proposition and something uh, that we can gather around and I think uh, approve of. He's talking about uh, the constant recourse to human rights laws by all sorts of ne'er-do-wells. And in particular, he says that uh, there are many, many uh, foreign nationals living in this country who have been convicted of domestic abuse. Uh, obviously, we're basically talking about men who abuse women uh, in the four walls of their home, a horrible crime. And they're able to stay due to human rights laws. And he says this is uh, absurd and we have to have a serious look about uh, at how uh, human rights laws uh, affect this country. And I think in that respect, uh, he should be encouraged. Yeah, cracking down on domestic abuse seems like to me a much more sensible road to be going down especially in the aftermath of the Sarah Everard case and we don't want a case where we don't want a situation where there are legal loopholes where people can use their nationality or use human rights laws to uh, get around their the, the feeling the full weight of the law as I understand it this is one of the benefits of Brexit as well is that we can extricate ourselves a little bit from the European Court of Human Rights and the European um, laws and the way they work around human rights um, I don't know how many cases there actually are of this happening, but if there's even one case, then it's, it's too many of someone escaping 
justice just because of this kind of thing. Yeah, there's quite a few apparently. I mean, human rights are a problem. I mean, for example, yeah. Wayne Cousins, I mentioned this earlier in the show. I mean, I'm sort of personally kind of furious about this, and I think lots of other people will be as well. So he's got a police pension, uh, right. which he's paid into, and of course, in the manner of these things, the police have paid in their portion as well. Now, uh, they are able to take away the police section of his pension, but the money that he's put in himself, he retains that. He will get a police pension. Uh, and the reason that he uh, is able to get that is, to, is that uh, to take away that money that he's personally put in would apparently be against his human rights. I say he can stick his human rights where the sun don't shine, take the pension away from him. This is the sort of nonsense that has to end. Yeah, for serious offences like Wayne Cousins, I don't think there's any real argument to uh, allow them to keep their pension pot or anything like that. If someone, especially in the case of Wayne Cousins, when he's going to he's going to die in prison, so we're not worrying about rehabilitating him. We're not worrying about oh, what about when he comes out? We need to make sure that society is going to welcome him back. This is just a case of yeah. uh, not leaving him with yeah. with money that yeah. <laughs> he doesn't deserve. Yeah, you know, uh, things that I'm not going to lose lose any sleep about. One, yeah. Wayne Cousins' <laughs> human rights for God. God's sake. While we're on that topic, uh, Jason, uh, I do feel that the Tories and Pretty Patel, who made a big show today of saying we are going to launch an independent inquiry over what went wrong with the Wayne Cousins saga. We need to look at toxic cop culture, uh, the kind of system that is going on within the police force that allows such people to be police officers and so on and so forth uh we have fine words uh but there's an elephant in the room here uh they haven't got rid of the police chief who presided over this culture uh Cressida Dick uh I think it's extraordinary that she's being allowed to keep her job how can the pu the public be expected to even begin the process of getting some trust back in the police if the police chief who presided over the Wayne Cousins saga who presided over this culture that apparently has to be stopped this toxic cop culture that has to be sorted out how can we trust the police if the same cop is in charge yeah, I completely agree. Cressida Dick must have some amazing compromat on Sadiq Khan and on <laughs> everyone in the government to be staying in her position, having people coming out and giving speeches of support and saying she's the right person to implement these cultural changes and these policy changes in the police. Her resigning would have been step one on a very long road towards the police starting to regain trust and regain their reputation uh, and being able to protect people again rather than people feeling they need protection from the police. And so the fact that we haven't even made that first step of replacing the leader who's overseen all of this just means there's there's no hope. And on a, on a depressing note, it means there will be more Sarah Everards because we're not making any changes here. Well, women don't feel safe on the streets. And there's, exactly. there is nothing uh, more indictful that you can say about the police force that uh, you yep. do not make women feel safe on the streets. By the way, I don't think guys feel all that safe either. Uh, last point, uh, Jason, I wanted to ask you about vaccine passports. A consultation does come in in a week or so. I'm trying to think whether it might be a couple of weeks. Uh, very soon, in a few days' time, uh, the government will launch its, that's, this is the English government, will launch its consultation into vaccine passports. Uh, so once again, uh, we keep being told, Sajid Javid the other week, it's off the agenda. It's not off the agenda. They're bringing in a consultation as to whether or not they should be used at indoor and outdoor venues. Talking about football matches, talking about nightclubs, uh, theatres, cinemas, and so on and so forth. So as we go about our lives, we feel right now that uh, the worst of the COVID crisis is behind us. We, you know, we're living reasonably normal lives now, and yet... There's still the spectre of vaccine passports. If they bring them in, uh, I think the nightmare returns. I don't know how anyone running a business, or indeed anyone at all, is supposed to trust the government if you don't know what rights you're going to have, what liberties you're going to have, from one week to the next. This story just, just won't go away, even when we've effectively completed the vaccine rollout. Even if there was an argument for vaccine passports a few months ago, it would be dead in the water now. It doesn't make any sense. It's as simple as that. It, it doesn't, uh, but uh, when uh, things don't make any sense, you can rest assured this government will gather around <laughs> it and bring it in. Uh, Jason, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming into the studio. Jason Reed there from Young Voices UK. He'll be back next week, uh, same time, same place.